Welcome back everyone. In this video, I'm gonna break down for you one of the 23 different setups in my new black and white lighting handbook. Previously, I came out with a lighting handbook that was all about multiple light setups and then followed it up with one that was about one light setups. But this one is gonna be all about black and white. And one of the key things about black and white is creating contrast throughout the scene where everything stands out between the subject and the background and the clothing. And I'm gonna go over all of those things in this digital download that you'll be able to, to find at johngress.com slash lighting handbooks. But in this video today, I'm gonna to fully break down one of the looks, including behind the scenes video and talk about what each light is doing and, and how it's working working. And don't worry, I'm not going to hold back and say, well, if you want the rest of the story by the handbook, this is just free education and know that it is one of the 23 looks in the handbook. So if you enjoy this video, you probably would also enjoy um, the handbook as well. And for a limited time, I'm going to be selling it for half off. Normally they are $50, but right now this one will be available for only $25. I'll also put links to all the equipment in the description below. And if you click on those links, it will help you find the gear and it will also help support me to make more videos like this one. So this look started off by me doing a shoot with a client right before Vincent showed up. And during that shoot, I ended up posing him with a chair in front of my green set, which I built in another video if you wanna check that out. I've got the Parabolics 35D over here on camera left, and it's in the spot position, which means the light is pushed all the way in, and that's coming across here and creating some hard light on his face. If you don't have one of these parabolic reflectors, which is probably likely, a small soft box with a grid will probably do the job just fine, or maybe let's say a 16 inch silver reflector, uh, that should work out as well. Then I've got over here an optical snoot with a palm tree gobo, and that's focused on the wall back there. When Vincent came, I decided that I wanted to take things up to the next level. So I decided that I would sort of have him styled as that 1950 sort of detective, which is usually good for these sort of film noir kind of looks. And I would have him sit on this very uh, tabletop here, which is just a scrap of wood. Well, no, it's actually the top of a piece of furniture that I found in an alley and then uh, broke off with a crowbar or a hammer or something and took it in my SUV and, and drove away. You never know what good things you're going to find in an alley, went out on a walk, um, but I did that day, and then I came back uh, with my car, and I took it. So now it's here in the studio, and I think it looks really good, and adds, oh, I dropped my notes, so now I don't know what I'm going to say, but it adds a, uh, a really cool effect, I think, and can really uh, style up the set. So he was, uh, or spice up the set, dress up the set. Maybe that's the right official term. Um, so he was over there uh, with this uh, piece of wood across two apple boxes on each side and I had him sitting there with a suitcase next to him. Now, one more caveat about that client shoot. It was only a one hour uh, shoot. So I had to go with setups that I'd done before, which doesn't really give me a lot of time to sort of ad lib and come up with new ideas. But when I'm doing the model test shoots, I usually schedule them for about three hours. So it was no big deal for me to put an hour or an hour and a half into this look, which is what it ended up taking for me to, to take this from, you know, a good two light setup to what I think is a really good four light setup. So I had to perfect each light as I went along. So going from that client look with the two lights, the first light that I added was a hair light. And that was a reflector with a about a 30 degree, maybe or a 20 degree grid in it, boomed over the set just a few feet behind him and pointed down uh, at a high, steep angle. Uh, rotate your body this way a little. Yeah, that's good. All right, cool. Let's check this out. That looks right. Maybe not. I found that when I started taking some test shots that there really wasn't enough separation between him and the background, and so I added a kicker. I guess we could turn the modeling lamp on. 
I also wanted to add some smoke to the room or some aerosol in the can so I would get that smoky like 1950s sort of vibe. So I had Alex who was assisting me on the shoot um, spray some back there but we found that it wasn't really showing up in the test shots and that's because you need to backlight smoke or fake smoke in order for it to show up. So I decided to move the hair light back all the way that I you know, could towards the wall and have it come in there at a, a more, less steep angle. And then that light lit the smoke up behind his head and you know, behind his, his whole figure and that made it stand out. I found the kicker was a little too restricted with the grid in it, and the light was really only showing up on the side of Vincent's face. So I removed it, but then I found that even at minimum power, it was just too bright. So I decided to put a double or two CTO gels on it, and that would cut the light transmission by about one and one third stops. Now a CTO gel stands for color temperature orange, and that's essentially converting daylight, light coming out of a daylight light source, to tungsten, sort of that old school light bulb, if you will. But two of them is gonna make it look really orange. Also, I did this because even though I was intending for this image to be used in black and white, I thought that it could look pretty cool in color. So if I'm gonna use a color gel to cut the light transmission down to make it dimmer, then I might as well use one that would work in a color scenario later. Then I had Alex go back to spraying the aerosol again, only this time the clouds of smoke seemed a little too defined. So I let the smoke dissipate in the air for a little bit longer so I would get a really nice haze. And then I proceeded to take the final images. Squinting a little bit, great. All right, go ahead and hit it, Alex. Stop, good. Okay, I'm gonna let it dissipate, but just hold that pose. So we'll give it a count of 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, great. Okay, I think that's really good. All right, so we'll go one light at a time. Here's the main light. All right, here's the background light. Here's the edge light. Here is the hair light. Here's everything together. And one last thing, on this diagram, I have the light meter reading for every light as metered from the subject's perspective. Well, I think that about wraps it up. That's how I created this look, which is one of the 23 looks in my black and white lighting handbook. In the handbook, you'll find out about the modifiers that I use, where I place them relative to the subject and what I was thinking, as well as light meter readings, which will help you recreate these setups if you would like. And really that's the whole point of the lighting handbook is so that you could recreate the, the setups. If you don't have a light meter, it's totally fine. You can take the same information and you know turn a light on and then change the power of that light until it looks right in the frame but you'll definitely get the idea from the handbook and a lot of people who have purchased the two that I made previously have put them to great use and I love seeing those images on Instagram and in my DMs. So again, go to johngress.com slash lighting handbooks to check that out and for a limited time, they will be for sale for half off or $25. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, have a great day and I'll talk to you soon.